For years, I watched the failed bomb attempts of Muslim terrorists with a degree of scorn, simply because their aspirations to kill people outstrips their ability. Like the Times Square bomber, where the guy basically filled up his car with flammable stuff, presumably hoping that something Hollywood-style would happen when he set fire to it. Or the attack with half a dozen or so Muslim doctors on Glasgow Airport, which was basically constituted them driving up their car through the gates to the entrance and setting fire to it. The truth is that making bombs is a very skilled job, and it's relatively easy to trace and shut down in a civilized country where people really don't have that much need to be making bombs and the such like. Further, bombs tend only to be useful if you're trying to survive the attack. Suicide bombers, of course, can make that worse, but you can't do it more than once. Now bombs, even well-made bombs in crowded places of which there's only been a few successful attacks, tend to kill about 10 people. And the reason for this is relatively simple, that even in a very crowded place, the bodies of the people close to the blast tend to shield the bodies further away from the blast and the shrapnel. The simple logistics is a terrorist well-armed with small arms is far, far more dangerous than someone trying to make bombs or nerve gas. Making nerve gas is comparably difficult to making bombs. And yeah, I do have quite a lot of experience in dealing with both high energy and very toxic materials. And again, it's relatively easy to trace and stop. And even if you do successfully manage to make such weapons, Deployment of these killing instruments has always been the most difficult aspect. Take, for instance, the Tokyo subway attack. In principle, they had enough nerve gas to kill tens of thousands of people. And in reality, they killed about 10. Two delinquent teenagers killed about the same number of people in the Columbine shootings. Sadly, it now seems like radical Muslims have figured this out. I mean, it first started with the Mumbai attacks, then there were other major attacks like the Tunisia attack, and now this new Paris attack. The real problem is guns are relatively simple to get hold of and relatively easy to train people with. You don't need any technical skills. All you have to be able to do is point the gun at people and pull the trigger. In France, this is an even bigger problem, as it would be in England, in that the Muslim population is now getting up for about 10%. That is just, just for ballpark figures, that's comparable to the black population in America. And in England, of that population, about 80% think that those who drew the Prophet Muhammad should have been prosecuted. And about two-thirds think that those who insult Islam should be prosecuted. That is, well over half of the Muslims in England hold a view that is irreconcilable with the free speech that is fundamental in almost every first world country. It will therefore surprise few that at least 700 people from the United Kingdom have traveled to support or fight for jihadist organizations in Syria and Iraq, according to the British police. About two-thirds of the Muslims in England think that free speech should not extend to criticizing their religious beliefs. Indeed, that criticizing their religious beliefs should be illegal. This is not a tiny minority of extremists. This is mainstream Muslim belief in the first world. Now, having lots of people with fundamentally irreconcilable differences living together is not so smart especially if it's done in the vain belief that can't we all just be friends hope that no one will bring up the fact that there are irreconcilable differences there. And honestly, I won't put it past the planners of these attacks that they looked at the Muslim population of Europe by country and they plan their attack where they're most likely to set off such a powder keg, which would be France. We need to recognize that when a significant population of a country has a view that is incompatible with what is deemed a core human right, that pretending that irreconcilable differences do not exist is not a solution. The French president said this was an act of war by the Islamic State.
the Islamic State. I mean, the clue is in the title for you bleeding heart liberals.